Hey guys, Matt here from Crank Engineering and something a little bit different in the shop today. A little problem I'm trying to solve and I want to take you guys along with me as we're doing it. So we've got Marco's Triumph Chopper here and when this bike was brought in it had a Harley front end fitted to it and obviously an old Triumph neck and a Harley stem don't necessarily match. So what we found was uh, once we we chemical dip this frame to remove all the powder coat we found that uh, some previous owner had manufactured this very thin ring put on a lathe and had fitted it into the neck stem here and that's had the effect of reducing the inside diameter to suit a standard uh, bearing that Harley use which is one inch stem and two inch OD so it's stock size for a Harley so with this adapter ring they've been able to reduce that neck size down use Harley bearings and then put a Harley neck stem and Harley front end on this bike so um, great solution uh, what we found though is after we chemically dipped this frame uh, the bearings have gone very loose in that adapter ring and the adapter ring itself is loose in the neck which is no good because you know as the steering stem rotates around it could potentially pick up this cup and rotate it inside this slip ring with the side of this ring here and all the ring could move inside the neck and any of those actions is going to cause metal to metal contact and a bit of wear which effectively will reduce the diameter of these even more and make the problem even worse. So we don't want, especially uh, bearing uh, parts, to be rotating in the housing. So this needs to be fixed in the next stem and the rollers will be ro rotating around here with the steering stem as it turns. So because this is loose, we've got to figure out some way of retaining it. So you could quite easily manufacture another one of these rings and make the diameter just a touch wider or a touch greater and have it an interference fit into the next stem uh, which would be one way of doing it um, and then you'd make sure the diameter on the inside is a bit smaller so that this bearing was also a press fit into the ring so it can't rotate either so that would be one way to do it um, if you've watched my video on limits and fits, you know, to achieve those tolerances it takes a little bit of work and on the lathe it just takes a bit of time. So you've got to weigh up the cost of doing it you know, in each different way. So for me to machine a couple of new rings here for the top and the bottom might take you know, a couple of hours maybe. So we've got to weigh that cost up of labour against other options for, for, for addressing this problem. So what we've come up with at this point is a retaining compound. So Loctite make all sorts of really cool products and one range is their retaining compounds and they're designed for exactly this purpose and that's to uh, prevent um, rotation between components. So this is basically an adhesive that you'd use with these type of parts to glue them into place. So I've gone through the Loctite product selection guide and I've selected this one. So uh, the criteria for that is really how much of a gap is between the parts. So how big a gap does this adhesive have to fill and what sort of loads, what sort of temperatures is it going to experience in service. Now this particular one, not going to see a whole lot of load, not heaps, a little bit but not heaps. Um, so I've measured the diameter of the neck and I've measured the outside diameter of this ring and they're about size for size so once it's installed it doesn't really move around too much. Uh, so they're very close in size but this particular product will fill a gap up to about I think a quarter of a millimetre. So there's quite a bit of filling capability on specifically the 638. So there's a whole bunch of different ones, but this one I think is the best one for the job. So here in Australia, this cost me $38. So this should last me a long time as long as I look after the packet and the packaging. So we're gonna fix these in using this Loctite product. So I'll show you what we do. Okay, first step is I'm going to clean 
this bore and all I'm going to do is use the just a very small wire wheel on a drill okay and I've done the same thing on a wire wheel on my bench grinder with the ring itself and then now that I've done that I'm just going to use some acetone and I'm going to just to get out any leftover rust or dirt specks so I just generally use acetone as a general purpose cleaner don't use it on painted parts because it'll um, take paint off but for welding and cleaning on metal surfaces it's great picks up the the mess and then it evaporates off so it leaves no residue or anything else so I love acetone for that reason so now that we've done that surfaces are clean uh, the instructions basically say it apply uh, a bead of the Loctite around the outside front edge of the ring apply some inside the collar here and then slip them together and rotate them as you uh, install it. So that means you can spread the adhesive all the way around. So let's give it a go. Okay, this bearing's locked in really well now, so it's not going anywhere. Can't move it, so the adhesive set, and this will work for this purpose just fine. Got us out of the job, out of the problem for only a few bucks, and really simple, quick, and easy to do. So, if you're, um, you know, looking for some sort of a product like this, you know, definitely go check out the Loctite website. They've got tons and tons of tech info. I'm not getting paid to say that, but uh, their products are fantastic and their information is great too. So it's usually pretty straightforward to figure out what's the best product for the application. So hope that was useful and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.